Okay, hello everybody. This is Emma of Emma Live Yoga and welcome to this yoga, total body yoga for weight management class. So just make sure you've got everything you need. You've got your mat, you've got a cushion, possibly a brick or a block, possibly a blanket and we shall get started. So I'd like you to come to a semi-supine position, so laying back. Just take a few moments to settle. So you might wish to support your head or your lower back. Just see what's going on with your body today and just roll the palms of the hands open in this gesture of receiving the universe's energy and also more practically releasing the shoulders. And just walking the feet underneath the knees to support the lower back. And just uh, allow the eyes to close. We're going to begin, as always, with a few deep breaths to bring ourselves into this present moment. So taking a big breath in. And out. I'm doing this again. Breathing in and out so just beginning to drop back into your body and connect with your breath and just begin to feel the shoulders and back releasing on the exhale feeling heavy And on the inhale, feel the heart space gently rise. And on the exhale, feel a softening around the eyes and mouth. Make sure the tongue is free in the mouth, there's space between the teeth. And as you begin to observe the breath traveling, up and down the spine. Take a moment to check in with yourself as we embark on this yoga for weight management class. So knowing the focus will be on building our core strength, stimulating our agni, our inner fire, our digestive fire, and also letting go of any worries and anxieties which encourage us to hold on it's that extra weight that we might not need. So remember yoga is all about accepting yourself wherever you are and always pursuing your best self. So following your heart, feel, following what it feels like to feel good in yourself. So know that we'll practice as always in the spirit of ahimsa, kindness and respect to the body. We'll tread gently maybe recognizing anything going on in our lives at this time. And we'll have a focus on being strong and healthy. And when we feel centered, strong and healthy, and usually our body shakes down into the place where it's meant to be. Eating well, eating a variety of things, getting outdoors, all these things help as well. So feel you can breathe in with calm and awareness. And breathe out any busyness of mind. On the next inhale, place the hands lightly on the belly into that digestive area. As you exhale, fan out the fingers and thumbs, allow the shoulders and elbows to remain relaxed. And begin to direct the breath into the belly space, inhaling to expand. And exhaling to empty. beginning to feel these opposing forces in expansion on the inhale, retraction on the exhale and feel as you breathe in this way that the breath is coming into the balance and we're cultivating the spirit of self-acceptance in this area which is the key to our immunity 
It's also an area we can hold our tensions, hold our thoughts. We can also feel sensitive about this area in terms of weight. So there's a lot going on here. So this process of acknowledging, breathing into this space of Hara, the belly space, cultivate self-acceptance, allowing everything that is to take you one more full breath into this space. So then on the inhale, open the palms to the sides of the body. Exhale, and we'll move on to our gentle warm up and mobilization. So take a breath in. Exhale, gather both knees into the belly, taking hold of the shins or the backs of the thighs. Inhale. Exhale, just beginning to rock from side to side. And just feeling that gentle massage of the lower back. Fingers and shoulders are still relaxed. And then inhale to center. Keep hold of the right shin or back of thigh. Exhale, either bring the left foot to the floor or extend the left leg all the way down if that's suitable. Inhale to circle the right ankle in one direction. And then exhale to circle in the opposite direction, just releasing those joints. On the inhale, float the right ankle up towards the ceiling or sky. Exhale, take hold of the back of the thigh, wherever you can feel a stretch. And begin to lengthen the breath. And feel you can release the back of the knee on the exhale. Know it's fine to keep this leg bent, no worries. So stay happy, accept the body where it is, meet it where it is with the breath. So from here, keeping the leg where it is on the inhale, float the fingers all the way back and up. So stretching back into the fingers and hands behind you. Lift the pelvic floor, Mula Bandha, draw the belly in, Udiana Bandha, exhale to squeeze and lift. So as you lift, send those fingertips forward, draw the belly in as best you can. Now you can always clasp the back of the head if that's better. Inhale as you float all the way up and back. So we're going to build some heat into the center of the body. Digestive fire. Exhale to squeeze and lift. Also help, helps us to squeeze out any worries and anxieties. We've got two more of these. Inhale to float back. Stretch. Lift the heart space. Strong exhale. So you use it a strong ujjayi breath. Last one. Inhale to drift back. Exhale to squeeze and lift. Now you can come straight down from here if you wish. All the extension is to bring the palms together in front of the right thigh. Keep lifting and squeezing. Try and draw the shoulders down. And then inhale as you float all the way back up. If you took that extra option. On the exhale, bend the knees. Gather the knees into the belly. Back to Apanasana. And just hold the knees into the belly for a few breaths there. Feeling a slightly increased heart rate as we begin to warm up and mobilize. And knowing this is good for stimulating our metabolism, particularly when we work with an increased heart rate and strength at the same time, we increase that lean tissue. So then from here, keeping hold of the left shin or back of thigh. Exhale, bring the right foot to the floor or slide the right leg all the way out. Back to the ankle, inhale, circle the left ankle in one direction. That's great everyone, exhale and circle in the opposite direction, shoulders are relaxed. Then inhale, float the ankle up towards the ceiling or sky, same as before. Exhale, take hold of the back of the leg, see how things are on this side. Nice steady breathing, leg can be bent or straight. Keep that self-acceptance for all aspects of your practice. Keep the breath moving, keep the jawline relaxed. On the next inhale, float the arms all the way up and back, stretch. Keep the lower back pressing into the floor, but you can lift the chest. 
On the exhale, squeeze those bandas as you lift head and shoulders, maybe if that's suitable, if not, stay grounded. Inhale to float all the way up and back. Really use your breath to compress the abdomen, strong exhale. Doing great, keep the toes active of the right foot if the leg is outstretched. We've got two more, inhale. Keep lifting the pelvic floor, exhale to squeeze. We've got one more of these, inhale. We've got strength and flexibility all together here, exhale. Again, feel free to come straight down or maybe bring the palms together in front of that left thigh. Keep lifting and squeezing, really good. Inhale as you float all the way back. On the exhale, bring the knees back in. This time, take the knees wide for Ananda Balasana, half laughing baby. Inhale, float the soles of the feet up towards the ceiling. Exhale, you can take the back of the thighs, shins, ankles, feet or toes, whatever works for you. Inhale, hinge the knees towards the armpits. Exhale, and either stay static or begin to rock from side to side. So, getting nicely into the hips, everything warm. And then next time, coming to center on the inhale. Exhale, gather the knees back towards each other. From here, inhale, bring the hands down to the sides of the body. And on the exhale, float the ankles up towards the ceiling or sky. So legs can be together or straight, bent or straight. If this is difficult to sustain with Purita Karani, then just stack the hands underneath the sitting bones and bend the knees. You want always to have your lower back on the floor. So we just settle into this inversion, but actively press the palms of the hands down into the sides of the mat. So as you reconnect with your breath, press those palms of the hands down. You'll feel the upper back muscles engage and also the shoulders. So you feel a real point of stability and also feel a stability through the lower back pressing into the floor. So from here, we're going to work the oblique abdominals, making a V for Viparita. So on the inhale, you'll drip the heels down slightly. You know, you can bend the knees to do this, no problem. And on the exhale, squash the inner knees and ankles together and take them up on the diagonal towards the right shoulder, heading in that direction. So as if you were drawing a V in reverse in midair. Inhale, as you come back to that central point, the bottom of the V, press the hands down. Exhale, draw the belly in, drift those ankles up towards the left shoulder. Continuing like this, nice, slow, controlled movement. Inhale. Exhale, you'll feel the sides of the abdomen kind of squeeze, and that's your oblique abdominals. Inhale in, try and keep the legs together if that's suitable for you. Exhaling out to the corners. And again, you can keep this as narrow or as wide as you wish. We've got one more to each side. Inhale. Extension, next time you go up to the right side, is to hold. So your legs are on the diagonal. Try and draw your left shoulder down. Squeeze your pelvic floor as you press the hands down. And most importantly, breathe. So keep the breath moving. Feel those oblique abdominals. Engage, that's great everyone. From here, inhale, coming back down to the bottom of the V. Keep it nice and steady. Exhale, squeeze to the left side. Again, you can come back to center or you can hold here. Try and draw the right shoulder down, press the palms of the hands down. Keep breathing, bend the knees if you need to. Then inhale as you come to the bottom of the V. Exhale there and just allow the ankles to float apart, maybe a little bit, or you might keep going a bit wider just to ease out the inner thighs and the outer hip joints. So just take it as wide, making a V with the legs, as wide as you need to be. It's all good. As you continue to press down with the hands, keep breathing, lift the pelvic floor. Then inhale as you gather those inner thighs together. Exhale, bend the knees, coming back to Apanasana, taking shins or backs of thighs, inhale. Exhale, again, begin to rock from side to side. 
Now from here, you can take hold of the back of the thighs, roll up the spine or rock from uh, rock to the side and come up that way. So whichever suits you, coming through. And we're going to make our way through to a child pose, Balasana. So your options as always, as you come through to all fours, you can have the knees hip distance so you can bring them together for a deeper release into your back muscles. As you arrive, inhale. And on the exhale, sink the sitting bones slowly back towards the heels. Keep the arms outstretched. Now you can bring the head down or you can rest it on a brick or block. So we're going to pause here for some quiet breathing. And then from this position on the inhale, you'll slide the hands forward, keeping the forearms down. Exhale, gently clasp the hands on the floor and then drift your shoulders over your elbows. So we're setting up for dolphin plank in conjunction with dolphin. So again, this is great for building strength, stimulating the core, the digestive fire, creating quite a lot of heat in the system. Now that this is option one, so this is where I started all those years ago, this was my option one, just resisting gravity, pushing out the forearms, you might stay here. Option two on the exhale is to think we're taking single legs back, but try not to move the upper body. So your exhale, as you take the legs back, you can gaze towards the thumbs, that's your drishti, keep the back of the neck nice and long. Try not to lift the, two, the hips too high as you do that. Option three is to stretch back left leg, tuck the tailbone slightly and then right leg. So you're lifting through the tailbone. So you've got a slight uh, rounding of the back, but then your shoulders are all the way over the elbows. You push out through the heels, draw the kneecaps in as you breathe. Remember the breath comes first. So if you can't breathe doing this posture, then please bring the knees down, go back to single legs. Otherwise we're gazing towards the thumbs, we're staying with it. We try not to give up, we're staying strong, we're staying with the breath. This is difficult, this is really uncomfortable, but you shouldn't feel any pain. So if you feel pain, please come down. Two more breaths. You can do this. Great, then from here on the inhale, lift the pelvic floor and begin to walk the feet in as if you were doing downward dog. So your heels are reaching towards the floor and you can let the head dangle. Again, if this feels too much, then just bring your knees down, no problem. So this is dolphin pose. Extension is to walk the feet even further in and to lift right up onto the toes, which makes this a much stronger dolphin. This is a good preparation for headstand, which we're not doing, but if you wanted to build strength towards that, this helps. And then exhale, walk the feet back, coming back to your dolphin plank position. No, that can be with the knees down. Bring the feet together, that helps. So you squeeze the legs together, lift up through the central core, and then exhale, bring the knees down. From here, inhale, sit back on the heels, but then take the backs of the hands back as you lift the chest. Good, little reverse back bend. Exhale, come up onto those fingertips and lift the chest as you look straight forward and breathe. So this is a little counter pose to the strong dolphin work we did there. You should be feeling a little bit sweaty, a little bit hot, and that your heart rate has risen, which is what we want. Great, so then from here, we'll repeat this. Inhale, coming back through, bring the forearms down. Exhale. If you felt you need a bit of a break after that, then you'd sensibly take the knees down option or the single legs option. So feel free to stay with those. Otherwise, take the right leg back, tuck the tailbone under, and then step the left foot back. Keep those feet together. Lift up through the central core as you breathe. Look in towards the thumbs. Stay really strong through your forearms. Strong breathing, we're not going to stay as long this time. So on the inhale, walk the feet in, coming back to dolphin. So you might walk the feet in a bit, you can't, might keep the knees bent, or you might walk the feet in a lot, 
You carry those shoulders right over the elbows and lift right up onto the tippy toes as the head dangles. So any of those options is fine. Make sure you can still breathe. Then exhale and walk yourself all the way back out to your dolphin plank. Sink those hips, but lift up through the core. You should really be able to feel your arms now and your core muscles keep breathing. Then exhale, bring the knees down. Inhale, float those backs of the hands back. Lift the chest. That's great, everyone. Exhale. Just feel that big jump of energy for working really hard just for a few moments. And then inhale, just tip to one side so you can release your legs. Exhale and stretch your legs out in front of you. Just coming to a brief dandasana before we move on. So this is the center of our practice, the peak of our practice. So bringing the hands down, either side of the hips, active toes. On the exhale, again, you can drop the chin down. Try to cultivate a calm breath, a calm mind, gradually. So we've really been working with tapas, which is kind of a positive, though destructive force of fire, which burns away impurities in yoga philosophy. So again, it helps us to get rid of anything we don't want, whether it's worry, stress, anxiety which of course helps us to manage our weight. Good, so then from here, we're coming to east facing plank. So on the inhale, you lift the head, exhale, walk the hands back, but again, you want your hands uh, underneath your shoulders. From here, you can walk your feet in and just have your feet forward of the knees. We're coming into a tabletop modification. And then make sure that your fingers and thumbs are facing forward. Roll the shoulders back, lift the chest. This is option one, so you might stay grounded. Option two, walk the feet forward a smidgen. Then on the inhale, lift the hips up, lift the chest, push into the heels and keep lifting towards a tabletop position. Next option, if it's okay on your neck, is to take the head back, continue to push out through the heels. If you want to try the full, version you come down and do this with straight legs you'd avoid this if you've got any lower back issues so you would lift straight legs try and get the toes down and breathe from there we've got two more breaths wherever you are keep lifting press out of the heels lift the hips lift the shoulders lift the chest breathe in and exhale and lower all the way back down good now as you come down bring the soles of the feet together and drop the knees out wide and just begin to butterfly wing the knees so you can still lift your chest, lift a nice long back and keep those fingertips down behind you. So we're keeping a nice openness through the heart space. That's great. And just releasing the groin. I'm going to do this once more. Either version, grounded, tabletop or straight leg. I'm going middle path, I'm going tabletop. So from here, so this is Paris Bokanasana, East Facing Plank. Plant the hands, stay in option one if you wish. Option two, squeeze the pelvic floor. Exhale to squeeze and lift into your tabletop. Head can look forward or go back. Or if you wish to, you can come to straight leg. Wherever you are, keep lifting. Push out with the roots of the fingers. Squeeze the glutes, lift the hips. Stay happy, keep breathing. Looking good, everybody. And then exhale, lower slightly. So lower the sitting bones down but not all the way. Then re-push, re-engage, protract out of those shoulders. Great. From here, next option on the inhale is to lift the toes. Exhale, begin to glide back. And you're gonna keep your sitting bones off the floor for as long as you can. So keep pushing out the hands, glide back, glide back, round the back, and then exhale, sit down. Good job. <laughs> so from here, just bring the backs of the hands to rest on the thighs, caveman hands. If the fingers and thumbs are wiggle, just releasing the wrists after all that work. Feel the energy the prana you've created so far. So we must work with challenge on the mat because we must work with challenge off the mat. And that doesn't mean punishing yourself or going too far. It just means finding what your limit is and working with that edge with the breath 
with positive intention. So then exhale, lift the chest, and then just shake out the wrists. So we're going to come back into another cooling balasana, another cooling child pose just to ease out here. So again, sinking back, bring the arms into the sides of the body. Begin to settle into your inner universe. A few moments here to breathe and be. Try to really soften and let go. Then from here, inhale, bring the hands underneath the shoulders. Exhale, and just begin to lift towards the upright. From here, you'll come to a seated position. I'm going to work with a pranayama called Kaplabhati, which is really great at accessing your deep inner core muscles and connecting them to the breath. So the muscles which lay beyond the superficial muscles that you might address, say, in a gym, yoga goes deeper than that. So I'm sitting on a block. Uh, you might want to sit on something just to give yourself some support through the lower body. You can sit however is best. I'm in Siddhasana, that's why you line up your heels. You might sit in Sukhasana, easy cross-legged, or you might stretch your legs out. So again, whatever feels best for you. As you arrive, just feel you can sit nice and tall. Lengthen the spine, feel that little stretch of the belly. Exhale, so we'll just release the shoulders. So inhale, lift the shoulders up around the ears and exhale to roll them back. We'll do this once more. Inhale to lift and exhale to roll. So from here, we're going to bring your left hand to rest on your belly and just spread out the fingers and thumbs as we did earlier, right at the beginning. So again, just begin to observe the breath in this space, the natural breath. So if you watch babies breathe, their bellies expand on the inhale and their bellies draw in on the exhale. And that's how we all start out. And then life happens, stuff happens and our breathing becomes really disrupted. But that's the natural flow that we're trying to get back when we practice yoga. It's kind of going back in time, excavating, sloughing up all those layers that have built up, all those veils. So this is a natural flow of breath. So with Kaplabhati, you have a very active rachaka, an active exhale. You breathe out through the nostrils and you try and draw the belly in quite firmly. So it's an inhale and an exhale. You're trying to get the belly to move in. So just have a practice, inhale, expand. Exhale, try and bring the hand in. Now as you do this, you try and keep your length. And you can feel there's a lot going on here, core-wise, to be able to bring this hand in. When I first tried this, I found that really difficult, but as things get stronger, it gets, it gets easier. So once you've had a practice, we'll try and string 10 of these breaths together and have natural breaths, and then another 10, and then natural breaths. So take a natural breath in, natural breath out. Then inhale, we begin. Exhale, 10. Then inhale, hold. Option to drop your chin, Jalandara Banda. Lift the chin if you've taken that Banda. Exhale, release. Natural breath in. Natural breath out. We've got another round of 10, breathing in and begin. Inhale, hold, optional chin lock. Lift the chin, exhale. Release the hand. Natural breath in, 
natural breath out. Allow the eyes to close for a few moments. And just so you can observe the effect of the pranayama. Observe how the breath may have changed subtly. You may feel more relaxation in that digestive space around the gut and the abdomen. So we did a very tiny introduction to that practice. You can hold longer retentions and you can build up to say 30, 60 rounds and everything gets really strong. But I would say start really easy, keep it simple and build up from there. So then inhale, gently blink open the eyes. Exhale. So then just release the fingers, ripple out the fingers and thumbs. And then coming through to an all fours position. We're just going to lengthen out through Ardha Mukha Svanasana Downward Dog. So spreading out the fingers and thumbs, tuck the, uh, tuck the toes under, inhale, exhale, push and lift back into your Downward Dog. So hands are shoulder distance, feet are hip distance. If you feel any residual tightness in the backs of the legs, feel free to walk the dog, lifting and lowering the heels. Keep the head dangling. Keep your gaze between the heels or the knees. Then the next option is to walk the feet as wide as the mat, wide angle dog. Exhale, walk the hands as wide as the mat and then begin to lengthen back there. So really lengthening the spine with the sitting bones up and back. You might find your heels are closer to the ground. So this version of dog stimulates the relaxation response, which encourages us again to shed any anxieties which lead to us sometimes retaining weight. Another option you have here, if your head is low enough, is to bring a block underneath the crown of the head. Or sometimes you can just rest the forehead there, where the forehead meets the hairline. And again, this support of eight pounds worth of head makes this more of a restorative option. So there's different things you can do in your downward dog. I like this version if I'm practicing, uh, say, yin yoga. One more breath wherever you are. Then if you've got your brick or block, just pop that to one side. On the inhale, walk the hands back towards the feet, keeping the wide angle. Exhale, as you arrive, turn the toes to outward facing. We're setting up for Malasana, Garland Pose. Inhale. On the exhale, begin to sit back between the knees into a little squat. Option one is to lift the arms, the forearms above the knees if it feels too much of a distance to travel. You can continue to sink down. You can even perch yourself on a brick or block, and that's another option you can take, less distance to travel. Wherever you are, you want to be able to lift your chest and press your palms together. Try to have your elbows uh, aligned with the inner knees, so no lower than that, because that encourages you to round. So you want to be able to lift, really lift your chest, Find the breath and you'll really feel your hips then. So you want to feel your hips, you also want to be able to release your lower back. That's great. If this is too much, you, know, you can come out of it at any point or you can lift to the higher version. Next option on the inhale is to bring the right hand to the floor and on the exhale, float the left arm up. Again, this may or may not be suitable, just see. From here, you want to keep your weight in your heels so you're not rocking too far forward. Then inhale, bring the hands back to prayer. If you've taken that option, re-lift the chest. Exhale, bring the left hand down and float the right hand up. Feel that lovely twist through your mid-back. Keep breathing. Then exhale, bring the hands back to prayer position. From here, we're going to lift and then come back to seated. So you might be able to pop yourself down from here or just use your hands to come down. You want to try sinking back, you can. So your sitting bones are light and then keep the hands in Anjali Mudra as you stretch the legs out, coming to Dandasana and breathe in there. You need to bring your hands back to that position, no problem. 
Sit tall. This is all core work in staff pose. Draw those shoulders down, lift the pelvic floor, feel a lift of the chest. Keep a nice even gaze in the eyebrow space. Then from this position, inhale, bend in the left leg, bring that foot to the floor, and on the exhale, pressing the palms together, keep lifting out the lower back and see if you can twist to your left side. Now it might be you can get that right elbow right over the left knee and continue to press the palms together, slightly different variation. We're doing it, it's stronger on the core, so you've got to really lift out of the floor as you press those palms together and peel the toes back of the right foot. Great, nice digestive twist, great for the digestive tract. Another option here is to bring that right hand to the floor and on the exhale, stretch the left arm back. So right hand comes to the floor, you can stretch it back, you can take it up on the diagonal, whatever feels best in your shoulder, just increases the twist. And then inhale, lift back to center, prayer hands back to center. Exhale, now try and keep tall, use those core muscles to stretch the left leg out. Inhale, bend the right leg in. Inhale, squeeze the bandas. Exhale, twist from above the waist to the right side. Prayer hands to the right. You're doing great, everybody. It's much harder doing these twists and core work from seated. Press the palms together firmly, draw the shoulders down. Again, you can press that left elbow to the top of the right knee. Gives you a little bit of traction. Active toes of the left foot. Again, the option here is to bring the left hand to the floor, might just be the fingertips, and float the right arm back, maybe into Chin Mudra. Got to really lift out the floor, everything will want to sink, keep breathing. Great, and exhale, bring the hands back to prayer position, inhale, rotate back to center, exhale, slide out the right leg. Bring the hands down, going to Move into Paschimottanasana forward bend. A nice thing to do here is to shift your sitting bones, your glutes back, so your bum cheeks back, your glutes back. To kind of lift them back one at a time, which takes you into already an internal rotation, which helps with your forward bend. Another thing you can also do is roll the legs towards each other. So roll the inner thighs towards each other and feel that space open out in your sacrum. This also helps you in your forward bend. You can see. Already that's taken me forward without me doing anything. So then from here, inhale, bring the fingertips down either side of the legs and lift the chest. Exhale, roll the shoulders back. Now from here, on the inhale, you might take hold of shins, ankles, or double finger loops of big toes. But wherever you are, you want your back to be straight. So keep lifting that back, roll those shoulders back, lift the gaze. And then try and soften. Soften the backs of the knees. Soften the quads, see all those areas that you're tensing. Now you can let go of those and instead trust the breath. So as the mind kind of focuses on future, tries to rush you, try and settle into the present with a nice, even, calm breath. Inhaling to lengthen, exhaling to soften. You soften in, but still keeping that nice line of the spine. So you should really feel this in your hamstrings. And that's where you want to feel it. You don't want to strain your back at all. If you do have the toes, know that you can pull back on the toes with the two fingers and thumbs locked. You can also push forward with the big toes, you create opposing forces there, and that helps to guide you forward. Keep the back of the neck long. A few more breaths. Just keep softening and surrendering. That's great. And from here, inhale as you lift to center. Exhale, bend in both knees so that you can hug the knees in. You can round the back now. You can bring chin to chest or forehead to knees. And just take some easy breaths there. Inhabiting this inner space. And inhale to lift the gaze up and exhale and to release. So 
So from here, we're going to make our way down to semi supine position, back to where we started. Taking a few moments to settle. Again, as you roll the palms of our hands open, just close our eyes a few moments, take some easy breaths. Have a particular focus on your abdomen, your abdominal space. Maybe the breath moves more freely here, just see. Feel that warmth, that glow from the practice through working strongly into this space. And know the strength you've created will help your metabolism long after this class. More importantly, it will help your mind and your emotional life. So we're just finished with a gentle spinal twist. So on the inhale, take the arms out to shoulder height, palms open. Exhale, I want you to lift your hips and just shift them to the left side. Inhale, and on the exhale, just drift the knees over to the right. Nice wide angle. You can drift the head to look to the left if that feels suitable. As you run into any resistance, just expand the breath into the heart space. Inhale, chest rising. Exhale, back and shoulders releasing. Feel you can let go of that left inner knee, no tension, no stress. Then lift the pelvic floor, inhale as you come back to center. Exhale. As you arrive here, shift the hips a smidgen over to the right side. Keep a nice wide angle, inhale. Exhale, knees drift slowly to the left as the head turns to the right. Again, you can close the eyes here. Inhale to expand. Exhale to let go. I'm just taking a few more breaths as we wind down this practice. Then lift the pelvic floor, inhale as you come back to centre. Exhale, shift the pelvis back to central alignment. And then inhale, gather the knees in again for the last time for Apanasana. Exhale, and again just take a gentle rock there from side to side. Easing out the back after all the core work and the challenges. Shoulders are releasing. <laughs> Mind and breath, quieting. Then inhale as you come to center. Exhale, bring the feet to the floor, open the palms. Take an inhale to the collarbones. And exhale to let go. So now I'm coming to rest position of choice, which might be this. So you might slide out into full Shavasana. You might roll to one side. Wherever you are, take a big inhale. Big exhale out through the mouth. And again, big inhale. Exhale. Last one, big inhale. Exhale. So as the eyes close, feel your letting go of Banda. Drispy, new jai, allowing the body and mind to settle into stillness to absorb the prana from the practice. So, a few words from Eddie Stern's book One Simple Thing. <clears throat> Each day we should move both backward and forward, twist, turn upside down, and create some strength. Variation in life is good. A little chaos is healthy. Just like we want variation in our heartbeat and differentiation of ourselves, we want life to shift a bit here and there too. 
And of course, it's in these shifts that we're able to gain that equilibrium in things such as weight, everything else just settles into alignment. Resting here for a short time. So now becoming aware of the breath and beginning to deepen the breath as you rise towards the surface and sending the breath down into fingers and toes, bringing some gentle movements here. And now moving the head slowly from side to side, easing out the back of the neck. And when you're ready to, on the next inhale, reaching the arms up and back for a full body stretch. Big exhale to let go. Drawing the knees into the belly, having a rock from side to side until you can roll over to your right side and drop the bones heavy into the floor for a few moments. As you pause here, you can revisit your intention. Feel maybe the benefits of the practice and movement of breath a sense of well-being. Then bringing the top hand to the floor, stretching out the top leg and coming through to comfortable seated. So sitting tall, lengthening the spine, lifting the heart space. And bringing the hands to Anjali Mudra as we give thanks to our health and our practice. Inhale to lift the prayer hands up. Exhale to center. Namaste. So thank you for practicing with me and see you soon. Enjoy your day.